Hi guys, it's um, RC Wizard here. Um, yeah, I thought I'd give you, um, well, discuss, I guess, some of the th issues I've had to kind of help you guys out. I know I kind of look on YouTube to find out information. I wish there was more on, um, I know people have done reviews on this I ISDT T8, but you know, battery charger for 8S batteries, because I did buy, buy these 8S batteries and obviously then had to buy the, you know, buy the charger to charge these because obviously you can't charge them with a, a 6S, <laughs> strangely enough, um, LiPo charger. So bought this and clearly because it's designed to, you know, for them to sell in e every country. So they don't sell it with a mains power, you know, they don't sell it with a mains power lead. All it says is input 12 to 40 volts. That's all, all well and good. But um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll just buy a 12 volt cheap kind of you know charger like this plug it in and and hey presto i'll be able to charge my as battery no it doesn't allow you to do that and i'll show you that in a minute it kind of just trips out and doesn't like it and you go oh, well okay well then i'll i'll buy one that's kind of slightly higher rated like this one because obviously it can go up to 40 volts so yeah bought this one which is up to rated up to 24 volts and 5 amps um obviously wired on um, an XT60 lead, which obviously plugs into here. And there are, there's other people on YouTube guys that have um, done a more thorough, you know, talk about this. So if you need to know more information, then watch their videos, then, you know, do a very in-depth thing of all the kind of programming and stuff like that. This video is just purely gonna show you how to charge, a, you know, an 8S battery and what you need to do to, to do that, basically. So, yeah, so 24, 24 volt, is you know plug this one into the mains not that expensive for kind of pcs and things like that or other you know devices that need that many volts plug that one in i thought great 24 volts there'll be plenty of plenty of power plugged in and this is on a 7s as well plugged in the 8s same thing tripped out me going a bit kind of mad here what, you know the hell's going on why can't it charge it i'm not you know an electrical expert i can do soldering and i know enough, enough about kind of volts and amps and things like that but clearly this one wasn't powerful enough. So I went down the line of, um, I didn't buy this one straight away. I bought a PC, I can't remember what they're called now, but anyway, I'm sure you guys will know. But um, yeah, they're power units for PCs. This one's not necessarily for a PC. It could be a power unit for anyone, this one. So I did buy a PC one, a 12 volt one. It had 300, what was it? Not 300 amps or something like that, 300 volts. So no, it wasn't 300 volts, it was silly. Anyway. But it was a lot more powerful. Maybe it was the, I can't remember. It was 300 amps or watts. No, it was watts. That was it. It was 300 watts output. So I thought, you know, great. That's more than powerful enough. Plugged it all in. Same thing. You know, wouldn't allow it to do it. And I think because it was it was 12 volts output. So um, it's, yeah, that tripped again. And again, I'm, you know, pulling my hair out and trying not to get too angry because obviously there's no one to blame, but there was no, no one to say what to do basically. So anyway, cut a long story short, I bought this guy here and I found it on eBay. It's pretty expensive. I think these, well, they're thinking about 120 pounds or maybe even 200 pounds. It's a power, it's just a pure power output. It's um, mains, obviously mains input 240, you know, volts. Um, 12 amps output so it's basically what you, what i'm trying to say is don't buy a 12 volt input to put in here and the reason for that it tends to kind of trip out maybe if you, this was 12 volts and you know 12 amps then it'd probably be fine but just to stick you know be doubly sure then just go to 24 24 volts basically and this one's got 12 amps output and it's obviously a dedicated power unit so mains goes into here you have to do a bit of, um, which I'll show you in a second, that plugs into the back. This one plugs in there and then it plugs in there and you're good to go. But obviously it adds a massive cost to this. I can't remember how much these are, 70, 70, 80 pounds, something like that for this guy. But then you then got the extra sting of this. And obviously I got this for 60 pounds, but should be 150 or 200, I can't remember, for, an, for a new one that suddenly sends your bill up a lot of money just to start using, you know, these 8S or 7S batteries basically, but obviously there's no other way of, no other way of charging these. But yeah, so I'll go through, look, so what happens is, right, I'll plug this one in, 
plug that one in there, plug this one in, fires up straight away. This one's obviously 24, yeah. This one's 24 volts, um, five volts, five amps output basically. Okay, so this is all kind of charged up. And I don't know, it's um, Turnergy with their nanotech with all, again, with all their wisdom, I don't understand. You can, this guy can obviously take up to eight, you know, eight S, eight cells, and it's got an eight cell port on the side here, basically. So why that, and again, in their wisdom that they decided, I guess it's because they just put two 4S batteries back to, you know, in there. And that's why it has two balance leads. So obviously I bought this and went, oh, how the bloody hell do I get that to plug in, you know, plug into here? Because clearly it doesn't fit in the side. So then in Hobby King's website found this guy to plug in your two 4S batteries there. So... And also, do not get these the wrong way round. You've got to plug them in. So this is why I've got kind of like Sharpie black pen on here because that one goes in this side, this one goes in that side. Because what I did is I plugged them the wrong way round and a big spark came off of this one and it luckily didn't ruin it, but there's a big kind of bit of soot around here. So a big spark, I was like, you know, so I kind of electrocuted myself, luckily didn't, but then realized that these definitely have to be the right way around. Again, didn't say that it had to be, and I didn't know, you know, I did it a few times and it was absolutely fine, but clearly it, it kind of popped and, and didn't like it. Or maybe it was just, maybe they can be either, you know, either way around, but anyway, make doubly sure I've kind of, yeah, labeled them up basically. So, and plug this guy in the side here. And obviously all the kind of volts show up. I've got this little extension here because I run XT, XT90, but obviously XT90 doesn't plug in there. This little plug in here, plug that guy in there. Okay, then obviously now it's plugged into this, it's not plugged into that. And I go to task, I don't want to charge it an amp. I go to say two amps, task, charge, start. Okay, see what happens. There we go. It basically just trips out and goes back to the back to start, basically. So it starts to go up to an amp. Doesn't it doesn't blow anything up? It doesn't do any harm. It, obviously, there's kind of fail safe inside here. It just says it says, "Oh, I'm not getting enough power. I'm not going to do anything else." And it just goes back to goes back to the main menu. Okay. So unplug this. So unplug that for a second. Now go to this guy. So plug the mains into the back here. So that way around. Which one is, sorry, that one. There we go. And also, if you wanted to run two of, you know, two of these, then this has two outputs, two, you know, 24 volt outputs. So you could run two of these off of off of that, and maybe even more if you you know if you know, know more about electronics than maybe it can do. But so obviously then I've just soldered you know soldered these on there. That plugs on there, and obviously you would need to know a bit about soldering. Not that it's kind of you know that advanced, but obviously you do need to solder up your own wires for something like this. And obviously yeah, messing around with kind of mains and things that's this will kill you. You know what I mean? If they, if you run this kind of incorrectly, then that's that's a lot of lot of volts, basically. Whereas you know, 24 volts out of that is not so bad. Okay, so that's that one. Then obviously, same thing. Plug this one in there. Starts up. One thing to mention as well: you do want to have fairly high gauge wires going to here, because obviously they're drawing a lot of you know, drawing a lot of not a lot of volts, but amps amps out of this potentially. So same thing. Plug this guy in. Balance leads already in. Go to whatever amps. So I want to do 12 amps. Start. Makes a little clicking noise because obviously it's sending sending power into there. And hey presto, not you know, it's absolutely fine. And clearly I've used this quite a few times without you know, without any problems basically. I do really really like these char you know these chargers. Don't go and buy a yeah a cheap charger. Basically you'll yeah you'll regret it. Because it is lipos can be really dangerous if done, you know, if kind of yeah, 
improper use, I guess. So you really don't want to mess around with these. And I also have a kind of, yeah, a bag. Whenever I do charge them at home, I know it says do not leave them unattended, but clearly you're not going to stand there for, I don't know how many hours this takes. This probably takes a couple of hours or, or so to kind of charge up. I always put it in a bag and then put it on something metal, nothing kind of flammable around it. I haven't got a garage to put it in, but yeah, I kind of just put it in the lipo bag, do this up as kind of tight as you can. I've never had problems with lipos clearly. And if, and if one of the cells is dead, this thing won't allow it to, you know, won't allow it to charge basically. So um, yeah, that's why I would go for a slightly kind of more, more expensive charger basically. But um, yeah, so, but if you are, if you do want to use this one, then you can use, you know, it's only when you use a seven, a seven S battery, basically, if you want to go six S then this cheap, you know, cheaper kind of, I don't know what it was, 15 pounds kind of power, power supply is fine up to like six cells. But once you start going up to seven or eight, then you need, yeah, the, more volts, more amps basically, which these guys will not, you know, will not provide. So I do use this one occasionally when I'm, yeah, charging the kind of six, well, this one's a four, four cell, when I'm charging the four cells and stuff like that, just because obviously I don't want to shorten the life of this one, really. I'd rather, you know, this one just is dedicated for my, um, yeah, for the seven and eight S batteries. Um, yeah, well, I hope that's been helpful guys, because I wish I'd found something on um, YouTube about this when I, yeah, when I was searching about that. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe and um, give us a thumbs up if you think that's useful. And yeah, check out some of my other videos about my RC cars and other bits. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.